Firstly, as I said, Whānau, this is our opportunity to hear from the candidates. Uh, also, I will give you plenty of opportunity to ask any questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you a good 10 minutes to introduce yourself. And then I've got, I've got some questions. <coughs> no doubt, um, Whānau, I've got some questions and we'll be able to have a really good exchange. All right? I just want to say before we start that... <coughs> I just want to say that before we start, that I am, uh, I think standing for Parliament is not an easy task for the Williams and Paul. And if you hang up your shingle and you put your name up there and you get out there and you have your say and expect the people to have their say come October the 14th, you're a very brave person. Mm -hmm. And that uh, win, lose, or draw, I hope that we support in our own way um, both our candidates. Ten minutes, at eight minutes, I'll give you a bit of a cough and then at ten minutes. <laughs> 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 Kotea <laughs> My name is Kushla Tangari Manual. I um, hail from a small place called Rangitukia on the east coast of the North Island where um, the infamous Highway 35 runs through. Um, and I'm standing as the Ikaroa Rāwhiti candidate for Labour. I'm standing because my people asked me to, and that's basically why I've done everything I've done in my life. Good girl that listened, that was told what, uh, did what she was told. No, but, but honestly, you know, I was um, very fortunate to have been raised on Monai. Raised by my, I couldn't do, I couldn't get into any trouble, because I had eyes all over me. <laughs> but the beauty of that was I was born into a clan. And so I just followed right until when it brought me to Victoria University. And I also had a plan for that, but my auntie was the liaison officer, wasn't she? So she said, no, no, you're going to study economics. Hated it. Um, but still in my grand scheme was I wondered, how am I going to get back to where took it? So, I went back for a holiday, and I thought, oh, there's a job at the Kohanga Reo. So whatever I, whatever I did, that was justifiable, according to my parents, for me to move home. And then, you know, life happened, etc. The thing is, my whānau trust me to be a strong reo Māori, kanohi Māori, whakāru Māori, ngākau Māori. And that's what's led to the tunnel for me to stand in Ikaroa Rākati today. The thing that drives me inside, and actually that you guys personify, is the whakatauāki of Apira Ngata. I was educated at Ngata Memorial College, e tipu area. And you guys have done that, you've grown up, you've mastered the art of the Pākehā for your physical well-being. And now we've got to get that balance to allow you to follow your ngāko Māori, to practice as Māori, for the benefit of yourselves, for other Māori, and for Aotearoa Whānui. Mm -hmm. And of course, the final piece of that puzzle is to wairua ki tō atua, nā 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 ngā mea katoa. And I love that, um, you know, the Pope Te Katoa outside acknowledges that, because as part of being a strong Māori voice is about acknowledging that it's our responsibility to manaki te katoa. Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of whakaro I'll be taking into Parliament. Should you elect me as your Māori voice is my ability to navigate that world and to take Tauiwi on the journey with us to Whakanui Manamotuhake. Mm. 
Monte Cassua. Quiranoim Oba. So that's it, that's it. Okay. I just want to acknowledge one of the jokes that was made this morning about Nazi Pro East Coast rugby. So. <laughs> <laughs> involved with rugby, nine of them as the CEO of Ngāti Pō East Coast Rugby, the only iwi-based union in the world. Sky blue all day, so when I had to revert to where I had got a rash for a while when I'd start wearing red all the time, and so that joke really um, can't So I said where I was born, so born in, in the capital of the Tairawhiti, Manatuki, and I'm only took you. The other one. Yeah, the other one. But I want to bring to my tuahine too, um, Krisha. Just like Shane said, it's not easy. You know, and our electric's massive. I mean, it's 10 hours to drive. It's a 700 kilometre coastline. I mean, we've got 10 councils. On any given day, you can have seven iwi up to 700 iwi, and all the issues are so important. And they don't care that you've been on the road 48 hours before. When you turn up, you've got to smile and you've got to be in the moment. So I want to acknowledge my tuahine and Krishna for putting their hands up for our money. Um, so, born in Manitou Care, um, that's where I live now, on our uh, Kapa I wake up every morning to the Māori Battalion. Um, and so that's where I'm currently residing. So I'm a pa kid too, uh, raised on pa. Uh, parents were, uh, my father was a meat inspector, my mum was a meat worker. Uh, I was raised in the shearing sheds uh, up the east coast from a very young age. I, think I told uh, Calvin one time I was born in the shearing shed. <laughs> and I said, I remember when I was two and my brother was three and my other brother was four. So once you reached five in my family, you went to school <laughs> and mum had to drag the rest of you to the shed. Now, try and imagine taking three kids under five to a shearing shed. Yeah. So that's, what my, that's what all our mums did back in the day. It was about mahi putting kai on the table. So I literally had memories of being on the shearing sheds all up the coast around Tūnaha. Uh, when we moved to Hastings, uh, because Kaiti closed and my dad got a job transferred to Whakatū, the University of Life, we call it. And that's where my home that I bought is now. And that's where my 85-year-old mother and my 27-year-old son, who looks after my mother, that's where they live, right in Whakatū. So every day I wake up, there's the old remnants or the Whakatū freezing rooms. Which really, um, if you think about us as Māori moving from rural into urban areas that really sustained our families. Mm -hmm. And if you remember whether it was the railways, the freezing works, the forestry, the road gangs, our whanau worked in those labour intensive mm -hmm. industries and it really halfway to our whanau, we were able to buy our own homes, you know, kids could go to school, there was no homelessness back in the mm -hmm. 70s when I was growing up. So how how far we have come forward, we were now almost homeless in our own nation. Yeah. You know, we were sicker than we've ever been. We we're at the bottom of every statistics possible. But I always harp back to my upbringing as a way forward 
to meet some of the challenges that we're currently facing now. Um, so that, that's a little bit about, I have two sons, um, one of them was 27 yesterday, uh, and my other son uh, is 25. So I've got two boys. Um, one's an architect here at Oromani. Because um, my parents, even though my parents were manual labourers and proudly manual labourers, they wanted us to be educated. You know, they just, education, education, education. And so I've done that with my boys just to keep what my parents did. So of course they came from a labour voting family with a background like Freezer Works and in the sheds and on the coast. Back in the day, if you look about, if you look about, this is just my analysis, if you look for the sort of the wagon you want to hitch your political voice to, there were only two movements. It was Labour or National, you know, and Labour talked about the People's Party, the Workers' Party. So of course most of our people, Māori, my whānau, all went Labour. My great-grandmother was a member of the Rātana movement, her daughter, my mother, me, and down to my sons. Five generations, as far as I know, were Labour voters. And so there isn't any, there'd be very few Māori families apart from 18 Ngata, because they were national ones, yeah. um, yeah. and some of the Huhu from Te uh, You know, the rest of us were just manual labour and farming, and um, we, we voted labour. And I did that too, like everybody else. Um, and hopefully, uh, you haven't had your head in the sand, um, but early this year I decided to leave labour and join the party Māori. It wasn't easy, Whana. I'm not saying I did it out of spite or, or any malice. It was just my calling to go back and to go into a political movement that made no excuses about being Māori. Um, and so that's what I did. And um, I'm standing here after 10 years of representing the electorate of Itaro Rāwhiti. Everyone tells me it was Parakura's seat. And we all know Parakura was a passionate fella. But what I do know about Parakura is that he always put serving the people before anything else. He put serving the people before anything else. And so, um, you know, the 10 years that I've given to this role was really just out of service. Mm -hmm. And um, as I've said, I've departed ways with um, the Labour movement. I've joined an unapologetically Māori because I see so much opportunities, because I don't want to sound um, too negative, but too many of our family are still homeless, you know? We've got 400 living in hotels, and there's just so much to do, but I'm also um, encouraged by the fact that we've got all these young-minded, um, entrepreneurial, uh, young folk coming through the pipeline, and it's my job, and it's Kushner's job, and it's Shane's job, to create a better platform for those Young Ranata he put those skills to come through to hit the straps. Which is why I've been invited to your organisation. Because I joined the public service in 1988. In fact, my boss was Parakura. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry if I'm going to sound a bit, um, you know, not, not, uh, I just respect the work that you all do. I want to acknowledge all of you as Māori workers in the peace state. Because I've always been a big advocate for the public service in terms of. Māori workers, right? And how you learn to run organisations, how you learn to run um, offices, for one day, you're going to go back to your marae. If you're not already there, or go back to your hapu, or go back to your iwi, you want some skills to go with you. So, I, I won't jump into the questions that you've given me, because I looked at all those questions, I was going, well, heck, yeah, that's what we were talking about in 1988. Um, how do we unlock the potentials of not just Māori in the public service. Um, and wow. so thank you, uh, Fire, for talking about uh, your latest initiatives. One thing that's always, which was, sorry, there's one thing that was missing in your presentation, I didn't want to jump in there, and that's totally get the gender pay parity issue. But one thing I think we need to address in the public service, I know you've got the president here, is appointment parity. More your koutou, appointment. So if I was to ask in this room, put up your hand if you're a first tier manager in, the, in your organisation. That's the CE. Okay? We'll go down to the second tier. How many second tier managers in this room? Look at that. Right? Third tier. 
fourth tier. Fifth tier. See my point, Fano? If we're going to have equity in the public service, in addition to our value, because we should be paid, because of all the extra strength we bring to the role, that we can pull out a karana, we can do a mini mini, we can connect us to an iwi because our organisation is going to have a consultation, they should be remunerated. They should totally be remunerated. Days are just pulling in our Māori because they've got their skills. Those days are gone. So, I've got to share this story. Shane can, can I know it's been talked, no, 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 Anyway, <laughs> in 2017, something happened in government, and a certain party was in government. And because I've been a C, I've been a deputy secretary in the public service, so I've been a second tier manager. And not in Te Puni Kōkiri, um, it was in the Department of Labour. So I was a second tier uh, manager, and I had a passion for how the public service could work better for Māori, and Māori could work in the public service to help our people. Mm. So that's, in 2017, I suggested that we should really work on appointment parity. Mm. That was something I really yeah. pushed hard in 2017, mm. but I was told, no, we don't need to brown up the public service. And I just thought there was a lost opportunity because I know things don't happen overnight, but if you go into a plan to have appointment parity, you will eventually change the leadership and, and it's really the culture of the public service. Because make no bones about it, the public service is a construct of the Crown. Kapai does, no, everyone knows that, eh? So it's a construct. And so we've got to work within that construct to deliver better outcomes for Māori, you see? Now, underlying all that is the Tiriti of Waitangi. So what I'm saying is something, it's not just new to me, all us Māori public servants always wanted a better deal. And all I'm saying is I'm pleased with what you're doing, but I think you've got to push the appointment parity, kaupapa, and we've got to go at it at all angles. And how do you create pathways for young people. Now, I remember having this conversation with the... Is it 10 minutes? Yes. Jeez! <laughs> <laughs> I'll just pick up the other quarter door. Is it okay? Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you both. As I say, this really is your opportunity to have your say. And uh, I always say at the... I, I facilitate quite a few, moderate quite a few debates, and I often say, can you ask a question then, rather than make a statement? But I think it's, as Māori hui, it's almost a bit of a waste of time. All I ask is if you are going to make a statement, can you make it as brief as possible, and then ask your question. But I, I, I have a question, if it's okay to kick, kick it off with, it's a, it's a generic question, and because you spoke the first question, I'll ask you to answer the question first. Uh, please, Mecca, is uh, like most of our Māori seats, Ikoro Rapiti is a large geographical seat, um, spread over a large geographical area with hapu, iwi, and urban complexities and other type of complexities. How will you ensure that you represent Katoa? Thank you. Um, okay, how would I represent everybody's um, uh, interest is represented? Um, you've got to know the electorate. You've got to know that it starts from Portaka up in the north and goes all the way to Wanya Mata. You've got to know uh, who the Maya are. You've got to know the Hapu. You've got to know the Iwi. You've got to know the Māori organisations. You've just got to be seen amongst our community, um, advocating, participating, and that they see you. Um, then you've got to work strategically as to who's making the decisions. So that's where you've got to bring in your councils, you know, your uh, learning institutions, your kohangas, your kudas, your churches, because you want to make sure that you are advocating and you've got your finger on the pulse and what the issue is. So you have to be a very good time manager because like I said, it's a bigger electorate to get around. You've got to have really good networks on the ground that you can test what you're hearing is actually what the locals want. And three, you've got to front up the hui. And you've just got to put your cargo out. And if people don't agree with you, take the buy. The main thing is that they see you. 
That's how I will continue to represent the electoral report afterwards. Sure, sure. Hi, I'm Hajjum Bingar Um You know, what we're like, we're like Kanohi Kitea. So I can only build on what Mick has just said, and also it's about relationships and honouring them. And so I must acknowledge Alma, you know, I've known Alma for a few years, for another couple of and of course, Binny. Um, so and so that's what I've been doing, and I'd have quite a short run-in, so getting around this electorate in that short of time has been um, quite a challenge, but one I've, one I've loved, one I've enjoyed, because ka te mea nui o te ao, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata, and Mick is right. You know, the answers are within you. And so exactly what she said, honouring relationships as well and utilising those networks. And, of course, taking people with you, taking the whānau with you to make those whunonga, um, where my own papa is not necessarily direct, that's about incorporating other pakeke, etc. Kia tai pai atu au ki runga i whenua ki. Kia ora. Whānau, do you have any questions? I'm sure you do. Kia ora, Whānau. Kia ora, Kaukau, I just want to just emphasise a point. Yes, I can. Mika, one of the things, you talked about the appointments mm. parity. Well, you would have noticed that Janice, there's a programme called Kia Tuipoto. Was up on the it's more than the appointments parity. We've moved a hell of a long way from that. The elements of bias, discrimination, and racism, mm -hmm. which is inclusive of all aspects of the employment journey, which all of us are involved in, all different phases. So, Kia Poipoto is addressing those. Now, I have to remind you, you were in that position, mm -hmm. in a critical position in government at the time. We've had to really work hard to get that moving. Not a lot happened in the time that you were in that position in regards to those all those elements. So my question is, as a candidate now for the Māori Party, how are you going to address those issues, which we know we're well down the track to address them, in regards to, it's not about gender equity anymore, it's about ethnic um, equity, you know, it's about our Māori people, our Pacific, people, our migrants, our immigrant right. communities. Mm. We've moved the hell of It's about our disabled. Mm. It's about our rainbow communities. Mm. So can you answer the question and say what what ideas do you have to actually continue to grow those 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 initiatives that we worked really hard on in the last two or three years? Mm. Yep. So so sorry, so all I want to say is that the notion of appointments parity is well down the track. You know, we've got, we've got amazing resources now, and we are monitoring all the agencies, all the State Services Commission. And, and we're going to leadership, sorry. Yeah. Um, the leadership part, we've really tackled that one in one of our guidances. So we're, we've promoted more Māori in the senior roles, mm. and we keep reporting because now they're moving on it, and they've started to, we've got the stats, and we've seen the data, mm -hmm. so we've seen that there's been progress just based on the money that we've been doing. So we're, there are more of us on the tier two, uh, on the tier two management positions now. So okay, I just, I just wanted to say, and Koshla, great, for the just get to know exactly what those initiatives are that are on there, so you can get a hold of what, what's happening I'll out there. I'll send both of you out before. Okay. Because you asked, because you asked, yeah. uh, make I it a question. Yes, I could. Oh, I think we've got your, the just uh, a question. Quick, 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 quick yeah. response. Yeah. Yeah. To support your co yeah. that, That's how we're going to support what we're going to do is, is what you're putting up here affects what's growing the leadership and diversifying our leadership in the public service, then totally will support that. that. That's the easiest way we can do it. We can do it. So, and I'll, and I'll continue to do that. But um, I just keep listing out to, um, you know, appointments and hope that we will have, you know, uh, more Māori CEs than what we currently have. And when I say that, not disrespect, disrespecting those that are CEs, from what my observation is, is that they've been created. They've been created. So the CE positions that I think Māori should be driving is where most of our people are. 
they should be with the health, I mean, we've got the Māori Health Authority, I completely get that, but why can't we have a head of the Ministry of Education that's Māori? Why can't we have the head of the Ministry of Health that's Māori? Why can't we have the head of corrections? Because most of our people are incarcerated. That's a terrible thing to say, but that's the reality. You know, all I'm saying is if we have Māori leadership, cultural change, because it's not with the people, it's the culture. That was what my point was around it's a construct of the crown. Because we all, even even our own ministers say that correction is fundamentally racist. Um, the justice minister also called out the justice system as fundamentally racist. So we've got ministers calling their own systems racist. And all I'm saying is, continuing on that journey, We've got to change the culture of the public service. Now, if you're doing that through your leaderships, that's the best way I can support your co -papa. So that was the point. So don't mm -hmm. want to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. I've got a comment. I think we're on the same page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Taku Whainga, my goal is to support your co from government at the table. I've got a... I've got, a, I've got some questions here, and I do want to continue our put it all from before, but this is a sort of a policy-specific question, and I'll ask you to answer the first piece of question. Um, how will you support the delivery of equitable services to Māori, in particular Akafai Ora and Te Whatu Ora? Well, first of all, I'm able to state that Te Akafai Ora is safe under a Labour government. And I also just want to say something that I've, I've said in a couple of forums. The Māori Party are not our opposition. You know, I don't... No. National are our opposition. No. We need no. a no. Labour no. government. No. We need a Labour government, Fale, to enable, to continue to enable no. better outcomes for Māori. National have declared that they will not work with the Māori Party. No. We will. No. I mean, it's Party Māori is very clear that we will support uh, by Māori for Māori, but we're actually adding that it's by Māori for all. Um, and I only have to reference Matariki. Uh, Matariki, uh, and I want to acknowledge Kahui, um, sorry, uh, Rahui Katani, because she put that up back in the early 2000s, and, and now here we have it, and the sky hasn't fallen. <laughs> uh, but some, like you said, nationals think it's, it's terrible, but so those kind of indigenous models, no, that's yeah. just the beginning of so many, and that's why we're trying to push unapologetically Māori. Mm. Now, now we want Labour to be in government too, don't get me wrong, I mean, because we need a left-leaning government. Yeah. But the role that party Māori plays is that we can be the thorn in the government side for the push for it, because not disrespecting the Māori MPs in there, when you're in a mainstream uh, <coughs> government, you've got to line yourself up with all the other demands. With the party money, no different to the Greens. That's the Greens' job is to hold the, the Labour government to account to do more in the climate action space. So all I'm saying as a as a candidate for the party money, I just want to stand and cope with this purely Maori. And and we'll get some wins. We won't sometimes we'll get some losses. But you don't stop pushing the government for the deliveries that I think our people deserve. Do we have any questions? I'm sure we do. I do. Um, <clears throat> kia ora. Uh, I'm Deanna from the PSA. So the organisations that I organise in are predominantly cultural based. Te Kone Kōpere, Te Tauri Te Reo Māori, Mano Te Kaunga, Mano Wahimi, etc. And Whaikara, the new Ministry for Disabled Peoples. There's a lot of rangatahi in those organisations. Very educated, very smart you know, have a lot of aspirations for what they want to do. How can you support our rangatahi in the spaces that they're in to promote Māori in those organisations? How can we support rangatahi? How can we support rangatahi to do what, sorry? To, to further their aspirations in their organisations, which in turn benefits the wider public service, which in turn benefits Māori all, all over. First of all, I think we can keep making it okay for organisations such as Te Apapaiora, such as Te Puni Kōkiri, to operate as Māori. And like, like I acknowledged when I talked about Te Katoa, Mika has just acknowledged that it's beneficial for all. Because what you see when someone is educated 
well, like the hell, I were educated on the Marae, but then things changed, we had to put them through to kaupapa for Māori, etc. And that's that unapologetically Māori outcomes you get. So we have to make it okay, and then advance them through those organisations. And sometimes that comes from empowering leadership that's tūturu in their kaupapa Māori, whakaaro Māori. And one example that I think is fantastic that's happening, um, you know, under this government, now in Matatua, we've got people being employed as tohunga. 20 years ago, I worked for an um, alcohol and drug service, worked for an alcohol and drug service in Auckland. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was quite revolutionary at that time that the Winnie ahead of Winnie um, appointed Papa Joe Dalamia as tohunga. That was not common, and it, and it still wasn't commonplace for 20 years till now. But now, the people that he mentored, I know one is running Manawa Ora, the biggest provider in Pornike, Rungawa provider, Miri Miri provider in Wellington. So it's about continuing to um, resource and support those things so that our Rangatahi Māori mm. feel normal. They don't feel extraordinary when they're a standout Rangatahi, because at the moment, you still do stand out if you're real taut in your space. You know, Rawari is a real standout. We want that to be normal. And the only way we, we, we make it normal is by making the environment fit for them, fit us. Like, we, too long we walk in and we've got to sometimes leave our rail at the door, sometimes leave our, our tikanga and kau at the door unless we're given the eye and ask to do the karakia. Um, you know, and so that is a game. What the court is coming, the money you guys have done is about challenging status quo. And one of the hardest places to do that, let me tell you, was New Zealand rugby. But now 40% of their staff of their own volition have gone off and studied te reo. So there's real and Māori imagery. Well, we know the Māori imagery has been there all the time. My point is, it can be done. It can be done not only in government organisations, but in Aotearoa family because there is an appetite for it. Mm. And I just want to mihi to all our Māori educational institutions, formal and otherwise, for the amazing work they've done, not just for Tamariki and Rangatahi Māori, but for Aotearoa family. Okay. Awesome. Um, just three quick things, suggestions uh, for our Rangatahi. One, they need to see people that look like them in management structures. Right? So when they go in and ask for something, they see someone that gets them, gets their cultural, um, you know, uh, their reality. So that would be the, goes back to my point around appointment and parity. Um, they need more of those. Two, I'm a big believer of connectships and scholarships. So how do we promote them on their journey and learning? Now, our Rangatahi now, Fano have generally been through kōhanga and kura kaupapa. Mm -hmm. They are really sharp. Mm -hmm. So please don't send them on a leo course, <laughs> <laughs> or a tikanga course. Send them on a senior management or financial mm -hmm. course, yeah. right? Send them on that. That's what they need support, not, they don't need teaching how to be a Māori. <laughs> hey, so just, uh, just be careful around that one. So it's scholarship. Mm -hmm. scholarship. And then secondments, you know? Send them back to the iwi. Some won't want to go back to the iwi. Or, or their marae, or their hapu. But how best to grow uh, their leadership, uh, then given the opportunity to go back and give back to their own people. So that's, that's just three ideas. Okay. Well, just, I'm, I'm going to ask a sort of a policy specific question. Uh, we, I think most of us recognise that we are in the middle of a climate crisis. And we've particularly seen the effects of that in Death Rider. I think we, over the last Four years we've had three one in one hundred year floods, flooding events. Three one in one hundred years and three or four years, and it doesn't seem that it's going to stop anytime soon. So that's sort of the context of the question. But my question is, um, with the climate crisis affecting our tie off, how will we support? How will you support uh, to our Maori approach to respond to the climate crisis? Yeah. So, like uh, Shane said, yeah. Papa Tūnuku is taking a massive beating. Mm -hmm. So to look after Papa Tūnuku, we need Indigenous leaders and Indigenous knowledge mm -hmm. to lead the pathway forward. Because we've ended in this way through development, through runoffs, 
through a whole lot of things. And so it's now our time, and we've got eco-warriors and we sell whānau. Awa look up, you know, people that look up to our awa, our whenua. And so Te Pāti Māori wants to back our eco-warriors. So we are going to set up a tire relief fund of about $100 million. That's just ours. We're going to get rid of all uh, deep sea and, uh, sorry, oil and gas permits. So no more issuing of new ones and phasing out the existing ones in five years. So decommissioning by 2030. Jeez, I don't remember all this policy. We just need it. Um, so 2030, decommission all mining. We're going to completely ban deep sea uh, fishing um, and then the relief fund. But we're also uh, setting up a $1 billion uh, clean energy fund. Um, so those are, those are just some policies that we're... Now people are going to say, how, did you, how are you going to afford it? Well, that's our taxation policy, where we're going to rebalance the taxation system because it's fundamentally imbalanced. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that um, the cost I've given were factored it out with our tax policy. But that's what we want to do in terms of protecting Papatuanuku, Māori by Māori, in communities where we have pushed this from, and I see it, it's all our coastal hapu that are bearing the brunt of the, not just the floods, the road washouts, and of course, uh, with hail in January and in Gabriel in February, you're seeing the, the damage on top of damage on top of damage, which is why everyone's feeling just so heavily weighted down with um, another cleanup after another cleanup other after another cleanup. But we just want to invest in those communities, so locally uh, lead community solutions, because like the Papa said in Tokumari Bay, I've watched all the scientists, uh, Mika, come into Tokumbari Bay. They do something at the mouth of the river, and we're all going, eki, eki. That's not where you start. You start at the top of the, the mouth. But this is an example of other people coming into the communities that don't know the communities. So this is just by way of an example. <coughs> Back in our local Fano, um, helping to look after the community. Hi, you're looking up, Carl. You know, like Mika's alluded to, this is about kaitiakitanga. And you know, it's, it's about bringing the likes of Graham Atkins, who's working on Te Rauku Marapaimona project and finding the Graham Atkins of each rohe. Mm -hmm. And the difference is listening to them, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, treating them as the expert. Um, furthermore, you know, we know that already millions has been put into our road and it gets washed away. We put millions into emergency and transitional housing. What people are saying also, Father, and this, this, this is a climate change um, issue, they're tired. Like, Mika, they're exhausted, yeah. and we've actually created a term called rain anxiety. Mm. I, I get it, you know, and, and my house is still standing. But when it rains, I'm like, do I have to go home? And we start ringing, is the road going to close, etc. And so, you know, another way that we're I'm quite, this is probably a mental health issue, but it's also related to. <laughs> Our taia is about acknowledging that people's, not just their physical health, but their mental health and their way to a health mm -hmm. is, at, is at risk as well, as a result of the disasters you've talked about, Shay. So investing in that also, and investing in, in that kaupapa Māori model. So Mahi Atua and Gisborne have just signed, um, have just got a grant to start doing that mahi in the rohe back there. But yeah, on the same one because Mick, it's about Kaitiaki Tana. Pano, over to you. Question? Um, down in Waiaki, we heard from about from Bamari um, about Indigenous knowledge. Mm. Um, would your government, well, if you got into government, would you support in terms of? Getting indigenous expertise, like the fires, like over in the Aboriginal people, the fires that happen over there, no one's listening to them about mm -hmm. how you, as a people, what you do to prevent the big wildfires that come sweeping through mm -hmm. and wiping out the whole community. So that's missing in, uh, in, in all aspects across the public service, uh, indigenous knowledge about how we did things. Mm -hmm. I'd really like to hear from both of you about what you would bring in to government to be able to introduce having our expertise and be part of in terms of the solution rather than picking up the problem. So we're talking about making Māori uh, Ma uh, an integral part of what we do and how we operate as a nation. Sure. 
It's funny because my auntie lives in Darwin, so you know, high population of indigenous people. And traditionally, they would start fires. Oh, they would, but yeah, so I, I can understand. So obviously, I'm, one of the beautiful things about being raised in a very, very small, isolated community is that you're governed by indigenous knowledge. So you're talking about Mātauranga period, and that's why I've been trusted to go to that, to go into Parliament. Is to, I don't know, I don't know exactly what that looks like policy specific right now, but my commitment is to be there and go, hang on, have you asked Kainui if that's how they do it there? Or hang on, do you know how to, you know? Oh, hang on, I can tell you right now, that's not going to go down well in Ngāti folk, you know? <laughs> so that's, that's, a, that's how I'm describing my um, role at the moment, is hey, waha kōrero mō tātou. Yeah, just like um, Kush has said, uh, of course the Party Māori is going to support um, Indigenous knowledge, um, bodies of knowledge that have yet to be explored because you've, you've, you've highlighted in terms of emergency management what I can throw in mental health, you know, and there's a shift. So big shout out to our mental health workers in the room um, because Western models don't work on Māori, but we keep trying to put a sort of round peg in a square hole, you know, because we think that's what you need to do. And I think the best person I can reference, because I just um, get blown away, from, and there's many out there, is Dr. Kitty Waititi, you know, who's a trained cl um, clinician. And she talks about grabbing our cultural knowledge as the, as the, as the solution for some of our, our, our challenges. And, and if I just use that in one sort of in the mental, well-being space, we've got them in all the spaces, mm -hmm. and you've got champions that come. But I'm like anything, you wouldn't dare want to get someone else's um, tribal knowledge and impart it in another tribe or the head. That's the quickest yeah. way to get the other oh, it's too oil. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's even happy within two oil, I think we'll have um, Oh, we do, don't worry about that. But, but the point is, absolutely, we need to create platforms to bring more indigenous knowledge out. And one of the things that I, I'm pushing in Party Māori is the, you know how we have the Crown Research Institutes? Mm -hmm. hey, yeah. And they're well funded by the Crown. I reckon we should have a Māori Research Institute mm -hmm. to do exactly that, research mm -hmm. our own Indigenous knowledge. Now, mm -hmm. it'll be pertinent to each hapu. Mm -hmm. hey, so you, just because it's, this is my Indigenous knowledge for Rolf um, Kaga, that doesn't mean it's going to apply to, you know, Kahunu. But, but <coughs> we should still be investing in those individuals or collectors who want that opportunity to explore what that means. Mm -hmm. eh? yeah, Before it all goes and then we're forward and it's another mm -hmm. eh? So, hope for Kia ora. Dano, we have any questions? Kia ora. O tinaroa te kia koe te katoa, tinaroa te kia kura. A te awa, nga te tahi, nga te whaua, nga te kahunu, nga te kaitahi, kaitahi nei, ko te nei whakaringo. I'm a kaimahi with Whatora. I have to, now I'm trying to, I'm kind of construct this in my head, so bear with me for a couple of minutes. So while I think conceptually, having te akapaiore and Whatora are good concepts, and I don't want to, I don't want to puppy anything, I, but I, I want to put this out as best as I can. There's a few things, so I've, I've heard Kōrero about, we're into it, we're addressing the, the bias, the racism, and everything else, solving the issues. We're on that path where we're doing that. Now we've stood up these two partnership agencies, and we work on the ground in Te Whakora, and what we've seen, in the 20 previous DHBs, we've all lost our GM Māori. They all got moved under to Te Akapaiora. Our senior position now hasn't been backfilled. We've lost it. Māori teams that sit with Te, Whatu uh, with te Whatuora are leaderless, but are now article to a Pākehā. So you've got that that's happening. Te Akapaiora has been really clear that their interest is not in operations. They've said, we're policy, we're monitoring, we're commissioning. But operations isn't our game. So, my questions now, where, how, where's my questions? My questions, 
what I see is another, another level and merging of inequities mm. of, with your Māori hatings. Because for us to be enabled to do our mahi and, and for, you know, to achieve those outcomes for our people, we have to have leadership that understands our power lines. Mm. And that's been taken from us. Um, what we have been told is, oh, Te because somewhere along the line, didn't get a regional leader. Well, for us in the central region, there's six regions that they're going to have, one person's going to have to take care of. And I can tell you right now, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. We've seen those models before, they don't work. Who currently is holding, while well, I absolutely am with co-governance, I'm absolutely with, with these two organisations, but who's making Te Whaiwa um, accountable? Mm -hmm. you know, and where's their spend? One of my biggest frustrations at the moment is part of the expense is sending 300 people on bloody planes to Canada to go to a conference. Why would we not stand up a conference here, an Indigenous conference right here in Aotearoa? Because if you're going to speak, send over 300 people on a bloody plane to Canada, kawaha ki a everybody, um, would you not just do that differently? So, so I'm frustrated and, and, and I hear pretty words. You know, I mean, my party by, by sitting over in this corner, but, but I hear the pretty words, but I, I really struggle to see the action, and I hear all the things, and I read all the plans, and all the rest of the stuff, but I'm still working with our whanau, and we're still suffering every single day, and they're still experiencing those outcomes, and if we're making a difference in this country, we're growing like this, we're not closing the gap. Those things frustrate me. So how do we... Because I think one talk is, we're having this talk up here, but actually when you start to operationalise that conversation, so that it makes a real difference for our people, where's that, what is that? Yes, indigenous knowledge, indigenous models, they work, but how are you going to get that into the footsteps of every day? So, so kuena tapu, um, uh, I'm not. No, it's I'm sure we. I'm sure the candidates get just a few questions. This is a great example of. I may not have all the answers, but I'm here to listen. It's also a great example of how traditionally, you know, we generational thinkers. And perhaps the Fakaro, I don't know enough of the history, you know, to be honest. I've been in this game for about two and a half months. <laughs> I'm not, you know, and, and I'm, I'm a wannabe be in this game at this point. Um, but, you know, it makes me wonder about the planning that went into and the generational Fakaro and the preparation about who we were going to put in those places. And this, the quarter we talked about recruitment, this is actually possibly an area where you guys could be influential in pushing people into those general manager roles. Um, so at this point, I can't give you any solid answers, except that I'll go and ask the ministers. I'll address that with them. And then come back to you through Janice. Um, yeah, I think it's an area that in terms of we could get involved uh, with our health team, in terms of our whole order team. Mm -hmm. Tera is meeting here this mm -hmm. week. It's an area like we've got all our uh, delegates, so I think yeah. it'd be useful to bring mm -hmm. it up at that and that yeah. boy about in terms of uh, succession planning mm -hmm. when they've actually been dismantled in terms of the DHB. What's mm -hmm. happened to our managers? Mm -hmm. We need to retain them in the organisations that they that they've established, uh, not get rid of them or move them aside yeah. to another organisation. So yeah. I think here yeah, we'd like to hear more from them. So just just. Sorry, 10 seconds, just That's to right. say, while you're um, having that conversation, in the meantime space, there's a whole lot of things happening at this level, and Māori aren't sitting in those spaces mm -hmm. because no. they've removed them. No. That's the issue. And these, and they're happening. No. No. Yeah. So if, not, if I take it up a wee bit, yeah. because obviously we're all, everyone, Māori, Māori, Labour, we're behind the formation of Māori Health Authority, because no. we get inequities in, mm -hmm. in the health system. I want to acknowledge all the ministers of health who have got who have got that kaupapa, um, the work that Māori members of Labour have been pushing for it. But you can only do so so much at this level, because yeah. as we all know, when it drops down into the details yeah. of who does what, who's answerable to what, it's no longer 
the purview or ministers and seeing the people that comes down. Yes. And my point around a system that is inherently, it's not us. <laughs> and yet something in terms of what you're saying, um, uh, it's to you because I've heard this. I've heard more of those Māori that were in the GHB um, that are now in Fatu Ora and, and I've had um, cousins that are doctors, my son works in population health, he loves it working with Angate. He's lost his manager, you know, loves the mahi, sees how important it is, but then, you know, without like cushion, I don't have the details, but I get enough sense that the original kaupapa is kind of not what's transpiring. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want when you're trying to build a separate authority, whether it's health, or whether it's education, whether it's justice, it's not even got to be throughout the whole process, mm -hmm. from top to middle to bottom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you put them in one box, then something, you know, I know the public service, you know, and I'm not saying there's dishonest people, it just means that you've got to watch it, because it's yeah. such a big, don't mean this beast as you're obviously, I just mean it's a big ship. The public service is a big ship, and once you take it off that level, it then goes into a pretty dark hole until something pops up. So what I'm trying to say is, when we talk about a Māori Health Authority, when we talk about a Māori Justice Authority, I'm saying we need to go right through the whole, from, from concept to implementation to delivery. So our Māori um, systems, we never, we're only going to do the policy and do the ops. You try to get away with that on the marae. You try to say to our Māori, no, okay, you're only going to do marae policies, you're not going to pōhere people and you're not going to manaki them in the kitchen, you're not trying to get lost. Hey, I'm trying, I'm, I mean, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to disrespect the marae, I'm trying to paint a picture that Indigenous uh, Mātauranga Māori doesn't sit in one area, it transcends that we are calling out something that's fundamentally unfair and we're going to put our hand up to rectify it. And all we say is the party Māori is we will resource that to happen. It won't happen overnight, but we will resource it to make sure that we've got Māori thread right through out of it, including being held accountable when it goes wrong. Does that make sense? Because it's a two-way street. Oh, yeah, and well. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. At, at the end of the day, whatever you're doing here is not going to benefit our fun mm -hmm. on the ground and the outcome for our fun on the ground, don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're playing your game in your own little playground, yeah. and but it's not trans... Yeah. Like the fire said, I think you're having a wee here, so raise that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm just, I was just going to follow up there. Um, we will, I think, in terms of what Mika has said about um, our leadership, our leadership of the PSR, I think there's two things I would change. I would make um, the Public Service Act uh, include the public sector, which would include the DHBs, because, you know, we finally got the treaty acknowledged and how they treat their workers. There's an obligation. And it shouldn't have to be under an act to make sure that our workers across in terms of the public sector should be covered. Okay, so I, I really, I really, I really thought the Labor government were going to move on that and and say like the core public service and the um, public sector were going to become one. We need to move on that because I think then we can start addressing in terms of some of the inequities that are happening. And I would say with Māori in terms of leadership, we can only do so much in Kia Poipo talk to say, but that's only for the public service. We've got the Exemplar Employment Relations Committee, two of our Runanga um, delegates, uh, Joanna Houston and also Manu, are on that committee. So this is meeting with the senior sponsors from the public service to actually develop uh, the Exemplar and what will apply. Okay, in the public service, but it needs to extend further than that into the public sector. If we start this, which we've started that process, we're going to start to look at what needs to apply, and I'm going to take that appointment process that needs to be embedded in that. So we've got a quarter or a meeting this week, but I think those things need to happen to make those changes. What do you I think that uh, it was very interesting that you got prompted on the mall. Uh, and if we work at it collectively and we stick at it long enough, it actually becomes part of the mainstream thinking. Mm. And you know, Dr. Mason Jury, uh, he, um, 
you know, a funny cup of fire was a dream 30 years ago. It's now part of our core construct, whether we work in Māori or Pākehā services. And in fact, many international um, uh, models are, 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 are introducing that. So, you know, that's a, that's a model that works, that has worked for us, that can work for us. And as long as we keep up the debate, keep the fire alive, it, it is achievable. Um, this is a good, good quarter all because it's about policy and perspective and people. So let's keep it going, folks. Do we have any more questions from the floor? Sorry, Matua. Uh, from Billboard, sorry, it's coming down uh, right away the woods, but and, uh, there's a sign in the motorway, there's just two single lanes with a fence, uh, fence in between them. And it says national way. They get elected by a two lane highway by right through Hawks Bay. So I want to know what are your thoughts on that happening with your party? Oh. That's a very good specific question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First question. Two, 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 two lane highway. That's yeah, that that is. There's already one through Hawks Bay, it's that highway two. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's one lane either side. Yeah. Oh, you mean a four lane? lane. No, same one lane. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. extension. Yeah. yeah. Extension. Yeah. From uh, what's that called? I don't live around here. Transition Gully right up. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. Yeah. Ah, I, I haven't heard that one. Sorry. You said Hawks Bay. So yeah. from where to where? From the airport through to Hawkesbury. Which airport? Uh, Maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm just trying to get my bearings. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. There is an expressway already there. It's an expressway. Yeah. But it's a slow way. It's only got. <laughs> so the advantage of having a 110k mile an hour is that they have double lanes on either side of the Hamilton. Yeah. Okay. So if it has to happen, the horse way, um, they have to build two lanes on either side. Yeah, got you, got you, got you, got you. Got you, got you. Exactly. So who's promoting it? National? National. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> 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 you know they promised a lot of roading? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> roading we need for Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no to be honest, I'd rather um, the resourcing go into fixing existing roads and access ways rather than um, we don't have the population uh, that deserves to four lane highway, uh, then you've also got to think about land acquisition on either side of the expressway. You've got to, you know, and I'm, I'll stand up and fight that not one more acre of whenua Māori will be taken. Uh, not one. We've given up 95%. We only got 5.6% in whenua Māori ownership across Aotearoa. So we've done our dash, <laughs> we've, Māori whenua owners I'm talking about, we've done our dash to contribute to infrastructure, whether it's a, mm. whether it's a um, airline, uh, sorry, runway, or whether it's a railway line, or whether it's a roading, we've done our dash. So I, I'm not really um, for uh, spending a lot of money on a double lane highway through Hawke's Bay. One, we've got some other bigger issues that we need to put infrastructure money into, that's returning places like Tangoil, Waiohiki, mm. Ōmaru, um, Tikaraka, uh, North Clyde. That's where Hawke's Bay needs the investment, not a double lane home. Mm -hmm. And just to add to that, like I said, I live in a place called Mangitukia. Used to be able to get to Gisborne Airport in two and a half hours, easy. Takes me three and a half now. And that's mostly because I'm stopping everyone going like this. Um, but. I don't begrudge development in other areas, but when we've got, like Mika said, things that existing infrastructure that needs, that's impacting people's lives and health. Mm. You know, people are having to move from where they're from because they can't rely on the road to be open if an emergency happens. Mm. Secondly, it's a national initiative, so need I say more? <laughs> <laughs> So it's railway, so it's all sorts of connectivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kia ora, a couple of quick yes and no answers. Yep, that's all right. Um, so part of our new kaupapa is we advance equal pay and pay equity settlements. Mm -hmm. And they often get stalled or slowed down and delayed. Um, if you are in the next government, we hope you are, 
and if you're in cabinet, will you commit today to expedite any pay equity or equal pay settlements that come across your desk? Yes. Cool. And um, further to that, if you're not in Parliament um, in the next election, will you still have a pay for those two things? Yes. If you're not in Parliament, so if you're not in Parliament, oh, yeah, yes. that was cool. Yeah. And the next one is um, often we find as a trade union the doors are open. Right now the doors are open to Parliament, so we can meet with ministers, we can meet with people a lot. Just will you carry on that commitment, regardless of whether or not you're in Parliament um, after the election, your door will be open to the PSA when we want to communicate the door with you. Um, our experience in the past, often the doors are sort of open and then as soon as the election hits, the doors close a bit, mm. and it's very hard to get those doors open when yeah, there's a change of government. And we have quite a, um, I'll come to it later, we've got a quite a strong strategic agenda that we want to push through that we hopefully will support, but yeah, it'd be good if those doors do remain open to us. The doors are open, and for me, they've always been open. I've attended as many PSA meetings when I've been invited to them, mm -hmm. and I try to, simply because I've been in your foot shoes, I've sat there for 16 yeah. years, advocating for change, so absolutely I will continue to do that. Obviously, just to answer your question, you know, I'm, I'm going to be unapologetically towards Māori PSA members. Um, pay, when it comes to pay parity, I look at our teachers, our nurses. I've met with Nurses Association and they always seem to say to me, oh yeah, they've got a separate agreement. And I always think we're, and I'm not saying this is what you're saying, I'm just trying to be very upfront. Yep. That when you say PSA, it'll be, with, for me, it'll be PSA Māori, because we have contributed. Um, and there's still inequities within mm -hmm. the PSA structure and the public, sorry, not the PSA, the public system, sector system, is why I'm saying yes, but it'll be on this. Mm -hmm. that? Just yes. the, one, the one last thing I'd add to there is um, it's not just nurses and doctors who run hospitals, don't forget allied health, mm -hmm. or the under 17 hidden professionals that are getting All our professionals, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, I've said that I'm here to be your waha kōrero. And the big, big thing for me is accountability. Um, and I come from a place that no matter what I'm doing, they hold me accountable. They go, hey, you said to those people. Yeah. And I've got some fun yeah. over here that'll say, remember that weird case there all the way? Why can't we get an appointment with you? Thank you. Um, so that commitment, um, it's really good to hear because I think we want the doors open, but we have said and I know we've sent it to Labour, but we've also sent it to Te Pāti Māori. Uh, we've asked them a whole bunch of questions, and I asked Michael Gibbs, I said, have you got, we sent it to John Buck, because what we're going to do is put them out, we always do a comparison of each party and how it lines up against our policy. It would be terrible if we didn't have Te Pāti Māori their comments for each of those questions. And this goes out, right across the public service. So we've got 90,000 members now, and we send it out to every government department. So I, my job by, um, is to get those questions answered so we can put them in that, in that document, that comparison policy document, for, uh, and we do this every election, you know, every election. So we, we want to be transparent. But so. hey, can I just say quickly, Party Māori is a very poor hearted party. Oh, We're a very poor hearted movement, I should say. So we're not like the big machinery, the red machinery that have lots of people. There's literally, they would eat their bead me. And everyone wants us to come to their voice. I'm not making excuses. Um, and then of course, John has got a full-time job, even though he's our president. So I'm not saying we don't want to. I, I will take that up. But I'm currently on the campaign trail like this one, and we're not in any offices, so I will do my absolute best to answer. I'm not even the PSA uh, spokesperson, but I've just come because this is my electorate. Yeah, yeah. But because of that passion and connection I have with the PSA, I'll do whatever I can to help. Is it wrong? No, it's not. It's just really good. It's just a good thing. I'm going to take it and I'll see that through to you. Okay, all right. All right, all right. That's my commitment, so you can hold me to that. Okay. <laughs> oh, we'd love to see your response. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So big Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, nice. Christian, Christian, this is a question to you first, and it's one that I'm sure we have grown concerned about, and that is about accessibility and affordability of housing. Uh, Māori, Māori home ownership has declined quite dramatically over the last 20 years. Um, so the question I have in that context, please, uh, Krishna, is 
how will you quicken the supply of sustainable housing to Maori? Well, this is something that's quite close to my heart because living in Ngāti Pro, it's been really cool to see the amount of whānau who have achieved home ownership under the Labour government. But one of the coolest initiatives I've seen is the um, Toitu Kairākati Housing, which is a collective of the four biggest iwi. I don't want to say names, you know. <laughs> like, because it's the start of war. Biggest iwi, you know, my iwi, te toro, o Tūrangarui, Akiwa, and Ngāti Pro. Um, so, the best part about that is the unprecedented partnership of government directly with iwi. Mm. And I hope that sets a precedent for many more industries to come. Um, so, continuing that, continuing that investment, and the thing that I, I went and had a look at the flash pop kind of their eh, um, Mika and Muriwai and talked to Dave. So what they've done, they've centralised the building. This is, you know, how we make things faster, because building on site sounds like DOA, unless you live like us, three and a half hours away from Bunnings and Waira 10. So they've centralised a hub in Tūranganui Akiwa, where they can smash out a house in about eight weeks. But furthermore, what makes it special is that, you know, it's enabling papakaina as well. And I think Doug Jones summed it up really well when he said it's not just bricks and mortar, we're not just putting a roof over people's heads, we're connecting them to their whenua. Mm. So that's, that, that's the short answer. And you know, just, you know, owning a home, people talked about moving here and you could buy a home, that became so lofty. So I know we've still got a long way to go, and I know the dynamics are different, um, you know, in urban settings. So um, it was really cool to have a peep at the um, He Heringa Kura settlement there in Taita and to know that those um, developments are, are going on. Obviously, I can only talk about my experiences to date. I'll, I'll get more across it, but that's what I know to be impactful and what I know is happening at the moment. Awesome. Um, so we've got a $4.5 billion Oranga Whenua Oranga Tangata Fund. That's $1.5 billion a year over three years. And that's to um, help unlock, um, yeah, or sorry, promote more Papakaina. So one thing we've got, and this is obviously mostly in the provincial rural areas, but we've got a lot of land, even though I see we've only got 5.6%. But we've still got land, and you will see if you go home, I've seen it, whether it's Waimarama, whether it's in flats, but it's social housing. But Māori are, like Krishna was saying, iwi are stepping up, and the government has done a partnership with Toitū Kairawhiti, with Kahungane Iwi Corporation, to build a range of homes. But like Krishna said, it's also creating the factory that will make the homes. So Toitū Kairawhiti, Toitu Kairapiti has done its factory, so it's able to build our homes um, and we've trained local Māori to actually build the homes. So when you go and invest in building homes, you want to also make sure Māori's right throughout the mm. delivery chain. So from the workers to the designers to the movers. And so I'm seeing a lot of that happening now. All I'm doing with our Oranga Whenua, Oranga Tangata Fund is really to accelerate it. So it'll be Māori led, more papakainga, um, just accelerating what Labour started. That's the Fati Māori's policy. But I'm going to do a little quick survey and that will contextualise it for my question. How many of us here are either wage, salary, or on some form of, of a benefit? How many of us here? All of us, pretty much? Right. Every dollar we earn, we pay what on? Tax. But there is a large sector in New Zealand society that, pay, that don't pay tax on their income or their earnings. For instance, property value, share, etc. So, given that context, and the people in this party pay every pay tax on every dollar they earn, how can we ensure we have a more equitable tax system? Question. <laughs> This wasn't in the questions I received. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I've got to be honest, I'm not across the tax policies. Um, so I think I'd best not answer that from a party perspective. 
and I best not get myself into too much trouble by answering it, <laughs> answering it from a Kushla perspective. What I will acknowledge is that Labour know we're all feeling the pinch right now and we are making moves to address the cost of living, not just for beneficiaries but also for the for us working farmers. Well, hopefully I'll be working after October the 14th. So I think why will kick on our shame. I'm so proud of the uh, Party Māori's tax policy. I'll just pull it out in case you want some specific um, questions. But essentially, we've recognised that it's, it's not a fair tax system. Like Shane said, about 2% uh, in this country own 50% of the wealth. Yeah. Um, so it's really uneven. So, we, so all of us that earn and pay, including um, those on benefits, we actually prop them up. Um, and so the Te Pāti Māori's tax, we, we want to try and rebalance. And yes, we do have a wealth tax. We're, we're proud of our wealth tax. Um, so what we're going to do is, is tax those that earn over 200000 We've lifted the company tax. So our estimates is there's about $7 billion of tax avoidance in this country that our tax policy is going to go after. Right. <coughs> that's, that's trying to do that. We're not anti-rich. So if you're a rich whanau, <coughs> we just think if you're rich, you should pay more. That's what we're saying. So that's why we're saying over 200, um, lift the company rate. If you earn under 30,000, you pay no tax. Mm -hmm. right? So we want to help alleviate the cost of living in a real practical way to think about whānau. Mm -hmm. We want to remove all GST off all foods. So everything, we want to take that off. And then we want to tax um, what we call ghost houses. So you've got some owners in this country, not the family home, so don't fall into that trap. We're taxing the family home. This is beyond the family home. And some people have two or three properties. If they're at least for renting them, pay to five. There's some in here, and they estimate about 190,000 empty homes throughout <coughs> Old Tiaroa. Just imagine if they came on the market, we'd be able to get our mokopunas and tamarikis out of motels and cars into those homes. So we're going to tax what we call ghost houses. They're there, but no one's in them. All right. We're also going to tax those that make a shitload of money in this country and take it offshore, like the banks. <laughs> um, so, so our tax policy, uh, we think, will generate um, somewhere between 11 billion, it's fully costed, um, to generate to then pay for all the things that we're saying in our, in our, in our policies. What's really neat, Pane, lastly, is if you go on to Party Māori um, uh, website, they've got this neat little calculator, because you'll say, well, what's in it for me? So you can put your earnings in this calculator, and boom, it'll tell you how much you pay tax now, and how much you will get back under this Party Māori taxation policy. I think it's a neat little tool. Go check it out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just going to see if we can. Do we have another question from the floor? And then I'll give our candidates an opportunity to wrap it up. There you go. Um, thank you for coming today. Um, I work at Birthright, we support single parent farmers, and we um, do you guys have any transformative policies that would give sort of immediate relief to cost of living that we're looking at? I think I just, I think I just yeah, touched on the taxation, so GSP removal food, under 30,000, <coughs> um, reintroduce free public uh, transport. Um, we want to lift benefits to the living wage. So like, rather than, um, so people talk universal, we want to lift to, um, to a universal wage. So, Te Pāti Māori has a policy of not, not addressing poverty, but eliminating po uh, poverty. So, all our policies that I've just shared with you now is around elimination of poverty. So, that's a few things. And in terms of single mama, obviously there's the free prescriptions, you know, the removal of GST from fruit and veggies at this stage, free lunches in schools, um, and of course now the um, introduction of free dental care for under 30s, which, 
You can't tell now, but I had terrible teeth, I know, and I wish that was around. And eventually, once again, we've talked about generational thinking, once we build that workforce too, it'll be universal. <coughs> Awesome. We do have we do have another yeah, question. I, kill them. I kill them. Um, uh, my name is Oni Phil. I'm from Tamil. So my family are from Tamil and um, the East Coast. And mm -hmm. as you have known, we have been um, hit with the Category Three yes. on our family. Um So we're currently going through consultation period uh, with uh, the uh, COVID recovery unit um, through Labour. Um, so I kind of I don't know what to party Maori. Are going to do to, uh, to support our Fano if we come back into Parliament uh, for our Fano um, that are from Tamil? So I'm talking about myself selfishly. <laughs> uh, my Fano, um, and that uh, with, with Labour, we would advise that uh, there are going to be some um, with some recovery periods. They're not going to buy our land, which is great because we won't be able to see anyway. But um, if we do not build on it, we can get a package if we do build on it. Build on it get a package type of thing, so I want to know why why that is happening. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so kia ora for uh, that. I, I was there the other day to catch up with Hori, PTA. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, just in terms of, I think, I think he needs a break, because mm. he's been going since day oh, one. He needs yeah. to get away and have a bit of a break. But what I know about Tam Royal, and it's also been reflected by the chairs of the respective iwi. So Tangoil comes under Mana Haruru Tangitu, and of course you've got Mana Ahuriri. So those are the two Tanias, Tani Hopman and Tania Eden. They are very clear, and I'm very clear, that Tangoil has a solution, right? And I'll use Tangoil because that category three, um, and it's come through me by a lot of whenua Māori. So category three whānau and she just can't build, right? And, um, and, uh, and you know, asking Māori to leave Whenua Māori uh, ain't going to happen. Mm. Um, and the Fano that I met in Resington had the caravan back on the land, and there the house at the silt was up to the window mm. sills. So but they're, they're not leaving the land. Mm. So to answer your question, Tangu will want obviously to retain the Whenua, and they want the government to go and, and they've pointed to where they want. Yes. It's privately owned land. So they want the, um, with the council and the government to go and, and they've given a couple of options mm -hmm. because that's where they want to go, locate to. It's in the Takiwa, um, but they just do not want to walk away from the whenua of which their marae is. Yes, the marae is going to move, I think it is going to move, mm -hmm. but they want to be in the box seat to determine where it's to move to. Um, and they've come up with solutions and they want to work with the government. So all I'm doing, and in our last week in Parliament, I asked the Recovery Minister, because if you know how any government works, they put a whole bunch of funding there, it's for relief, for recovery, and Māori are generally the last to get to the fund. So I asked specifically, will Whenua Māori, will there be money left in the putia once the orchardists and the growers and, you know, to me, take their bit out, is there going to be enough there for Whenua Māori and particularly Tāngwil? And I've got that on record, there will be Whenua, there will be um, Pūtia there. But your point is, should be Māori led? Yes. And we should be supporting it, and that's what the party Māori will do. Thank you. Thank you. Ahakoa e hara i te pātehe Māori tonu. And so, although I don't know your specific case, it sounds very, very similar, while we're not Category 3 to court it all we had in Ngāti Pau, where Topo Māori Bay were hit again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And how to whakaaro me nukuki here? Where are we going to go to? Mm -hmm. Our urupā are here. Our whakapapa is here. Mm -hmm. And you know, on the lighter side, you know, your neighbours might say, yeah, yeah, come here for a while. I know, you know, I, I live where I'm from. I'm blessed that our whenua is still intact because we live a little bit inland. Not so blessed that we're not right on the ocean. Boy, here we are not. So, Kotaku Kiakwe, if I'm successful at becoming your candidate, I will personally follow that through. I've really enjoyed this call today because it's been about policy, eh? It's been about our people and it's been about perspective. <laughs> 
and there's been no da 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 no can't start son. But it's been a good court at all. And what I want to do now, because I know that we've got other um, issues in Tucker we want to talk about, I want to give our candidates a right of reply or uh, an ability to summarise, so we'll take three minutes to do that. And uh, I'll ask you to do that first. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thank you um, to the PSA. Thank you for um, you all being here today to listen to both um, Kushner and I. Um, our election of Ikaroa Rafati is facing some real challenging times. Um, off the back of two years of COVID, and now we've been hit with cyclone after cyclone after cyclone. Now Kushner and I are going around to Talingra, vote for us, election. Mm -hmm. I'm just really sensitive to the fact that there's a lot of hurt out there mm -hmm. and disengagement, and a lot of whānau actually out, out of their homes. Mm -hmm. They're actually empty homes and a lot of people are out of them. Mm -hmm. So I just want to acknowledge um, our unique specialness of our electorate, but it has its challenges. Mm -hmm. So I've, um, you know, I've served, um, I've served this electorate for two years, um, and I've done it to the best of my ability. I still have energy in the tank to do another round, which is why I've put my hand up to run. And of course, like I said earlier, um, we've had a, have a change in focus, but it's not so different to what Labour has started. It's just a very sharp focus. And it's not just about being an advocate for our people, but there's a whole lot of solutions and bodies of knowledge that haven't seen the light today it's not only going to help a particular community in equal equity, but it's going to help the nation. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to have people in Parliament that understands the, the challenges of that place, but stays hearty to the people you represent. And that's all I'm doing, is presenting myself. Mm -hmm. It's a new ball game. I'm standing here on, on a ticket that's completely unapologetically Māori for, a, for an old Aotearoa home, which means uh, making mokopuna decision in a fleety centric environment and we've got to have those goals and it's okay to be Māori. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm standing for Te Pāti Māori and I'm seeking two things. One for me to fight and one for Te Pāti Māori. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs> same experience was getting paid $10,000 more than me. So, uh, and I know the, the stress that, you know, starts making you wonder if the grass is green on the other side, etc. So, kia kāta tōru koutou, ki te mahi o koutou mahi, and just once again know that fair payment agreements are safe under labour. Um, and I want to acknowledge the mihi, the, uh, the kōrero you just said, Shane. We got asked, Mickey and I just got asked yesterday if we could fight. We've already acknowledged, eh, there's one, um, Common opposition and that's national. We need <laughs> Labour government whānau. Um, Hoi no kotaku, he tono tēnei kia koutou, pēra i a meka, ki te kōwhiria, ko au, hei reo, hei reo kōrero mā koutou, hei kanohi mā koutou, hei manawa Māori mā koutou, ki roto i te whare mere. I'm asking for your vote to be your Māori face, your Māori voice, and your Māori mind and heart and spirit in Parliament. And I've reinforced once again that we need a Labour government. You, we've got so many positive outcomes for, there's too much to risk, you know, there is too much to risk. So, he mihi hoki kia koe meka, i tai mai kia whakapiti kōrero a tāua o tira tātou katoa. He mihi anō ki te, ki te marae, ki ngā tāngata whenua, kia koe te kai whakahaere shei. Hei whakaoti i taku kōrero kia tātou katoa, Pick me in 23, we'll have more in 24, and we'll thrive in 25. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lovely, way, a lovely way to end it, but I want us to challenge ourselves. When we go home today, you can enrol, if you're over 18 years of age, right up to election day. I'm sure we know two people that are not enrolled. Let's go home, let's enrol two people, and let's make sure that they, that they vote come October the 14th.
That's a challenge for us all. Kia ora mana What's that? We've got forms here. We've got enrolment forms here. And, um, that's great. Right. Registration yep. table. So grab some if you need some. Yeah, take them with you. So let, let's do that. And uh, to finish up our cordial today, I'm um, pleased to invite the president of the PSA, Benedict, to uh, say a few words and to do a little presentation. Thank you.